So, Marcus Conti reporting on this uh, interest, very interesting story. Mr. Defango, you've heard of Mr. Defango. Goes by a lot of different names. Is he, is he, hey, Cesar Chavez and, and whoever the fuck this guy is, right? So, it turns out that, that uh, Mr. Defango is named in the Seth Rich, Seth Rich's brother's case. So, let's bring him in. Without further ado, we got Mr. Defango. All right, so they can see you now, Defango. You're on, man. You're fucking, you're on, man. So, so Yo, this how's is, it going, Mr. Conti? I, I'm doing, I'm doing actually very well, actually. You, you know, um, so, so I was watching your video, right? Seth Rich case, right? That's yeah. they're throwing you right into the fire, right? They're putting you into the fire, right? Now, it's correct me if I'm wrong, but the story about about this particular um, uh, why you're in this lawsuit is because. Because why? Because it's a defamation case against Seth Rich's brother. Is that what it is? Oh, well, no. It's actually a defamation case against a man named Ed Batowski and another guy named Matthew Couch in America's First Media. So uh, Aaron, Rich's bro- or Aaron Rich, Seth Rich's brother, is suing these guys, and they would like to talk to me in association with them. Right. So they're trying to lump you into... So, so, so Mr. Couch, right? My, Matt Couch... Allegedly, hold on a second. Come here, cat. Oh, yeah, the cat's gonna cry. So I wasn't really ready for you, but now I'm ready. I'm ready. So, so Matt Couch is accused of defaming Seth Rich, Seth Rich, and Seth Rich's brother and the the team of DNC law lawyers are attacking him for what did he say exactly? What what what's the what's the allegation? Uh, the allegation, I believe, has to do with uh, what Ed Batowski was going out and saying publicly to people that, you know, Aaron, or that Seth Rich was murdered by the DNC, basically. And then there was some other information about payments where uh, apparently Ed Batowski was going around telling people that uh, Aaron Rich and Seth Rich had received $50,000 apiece for the leaks to WikiLeaks. And the reasoning behind the lawsuit is because. This information has got you know been around and been shipped out to different people, and it seems that that's what they're actually looking to get more info from me from because they want to know what I know about this whole situation because I was involved with Ed Batowski. Is there any truth to that? The is there any truth to uh, them being paid fifty thousand dollars for information? Is that is there truth to it? Or, or I mean, know. I haven't seen any evidence uh, that that information comes from a man named Seymour Hersh's mouth. That's the guy that told that to Edward Batowski when he was unbeknownst to him being recorded by Edward Batowski. And uh, to, to furthermore, to put it out there, is that uh, Seymour Hersh was kind of drunk at that time. Right. But that's where the information came through. So, I mean, you know, like, is there any truth to it? I don't know. Was Seymour Hersh lying? Maybe somebody should ask him. Yeah, no doubt. But it, it does seem, I mean, it, it seems like a, a, and I'll ask you what, what your, um, why, why Defango, why they're throwing you into the mix. But it does seem strange that, that, um, that a million people, I mean, literally probably a million people have said that Seth Rich, it's likely that he was murdered by the DNC. That's not really, that's not really news. They said it on Fox, right? They said it all over, all over the mainstream media. Why, why exactly did they go after they, why did they go after Matt Couch was for the reason that Matt Couch added, oh, by the way, uh, Seth Rich and his brother probably got paid 50 grand from the DNC for their story? Is that the reason? That seems to be the reason. I mean, there was an original lawsuit against Edward Petowski uh, who, that who failed. Is that? Who is Edward Petowski? Who the hell is that? Edward Petowski is a Jewish man that lives in Dallas, Texas, that um, was paying... For Rod Wheeler, he's another character that yeah, popped up that with guy, the yeah. Goodman, right? Yeah, um, right? Rod Wheeler was getting paid by Edward Petowski to investigate the case. There was some trouble as Rod Wheeler tried to sue Edward Petowski and some other people. There's some things that were said. That lawsuit got thrown out. Then there was another lawsuit by the Rich family against Petowski. That lawsuit got dismissed because they couldn't, or because of what they personally said, and they couldn't get up and lie to the court, so they had to dismiss the lawsuit, because it's not like they're going to go up in the court and say, hey, I believe my son was murdered, because if they did that, that would create a whole big old backlog, so it seems that this third lawsuit is from the Ed Petowski 
um, angle, and the Ed Patowski angle on this one is Ed was paying for, uh, he was paying for this uh, Rod Wheeler guy to hmm. investigate this thing. And then Edward Patowski also hired other people to basically kind of look online, try to find any information, and that's where Matt Couch comes from. Yeah, Edward Patowski was trying to, A, protect his reputation, number one, because Rod Wheeler was saying a whole bunch of, you know, bad shit about him that just basically was patently untrue. And on top of that, you know, like my actual interaction with uh, Mr. Patowski was that um, I built a, helped build a website, updated some CSS on some of his websites, and was, you know, basically consulting him on reputation defense and because of what was happening with his, like, Google search results at that point in time because he was getting a lot of, you know, negative articles that were coming up from his name and he wanted to know what was the possibilities and what he could do in order to, you know, like probably fix that. And the reason DNC lawyers want to talk to me is because there's another man, my business partner, although he was more like the owner of the business and I was the guy that was uh, getting paid um, as a 1099 worker, even though I was supposed to be a member of the business. Mr. Thomas Schoenberger um, decided that he, after he tried to extort $300,000 out of Edward Batowski uh, and failed to do so, um, he basically was telling everybody that he was going to say, hey, if you don't give me this money, um, I'm going to go tell everybody that you, Defango, and a bunch of other people plan to hack into Aaron Rich's like, house and uh like steal information so the reason that i'm getting contacted in this whole thing right now and they even know who i am and what my name is is because legitimately mr thomas schoenberger went lied on a federal lied on federal forums basically lied to these lawyers because of uh, some other things associated with me that he hates before and now like since edward batowski was did not get extorted by this guy He's just like, okay, well, then I'm going to go ruin your shit by saying a bunch of stuff that is patently untrue about what our meeting was about. And I think that this is why they're talking to me. I've already spoken with the lawyers. I've actually been in contact with the lawyers for over a week on this one where I was going to decide whether I'm actually going to get legal representation to shield my testimony or not. But I figured, you know what, there's no need for me to do that because... They're going to get a lot more than what they bargained for because I do actually have a lot of emails associated with Seth Rich. I might actually have an email or two from Seth Rich. Wow. And they're probably, they're, they're probably emails that they're not going to want to see, but they're going to get them anyway. So right now it's like these people. I've had somebody trying to fuck me over, trying to fuck over Ed Batowski. And, you know, Thomas Schoenberger is basically a criminal. He's got a very long criminal history record. I've done videos and stuff about this. And I know that their lawyers already know this stuff, too. But they want to get me on deposition. And they want to take a look at all my emails. And in no way, shape, or form am I running away from them at all. I was just like, hey, you guys got to serve me correctly first. But, you know, it seems like they can't find me, so I'm just basically voluntarily going to, uh, you know, subpoena myself, I guess. You know, sign the paperwork, send it back over to them, and then meet up with them and give them everything that they asked for and more. Yeah. No, it sounds like uh, it sounds like a little torture through the process is what they're trying to do. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to torture you into silence or some something. It's a very convoluted story if as I listen to it. But, but yeah. here, I guess here's the real question. Did Seth Rich, I mean, the bigger picture, was Seth Rich murdered on the street in Washington, D.C. on July 10, 2016, as the FBI and all the official narrative states? No. Is that true or false? No, it's not true. It's false. It's not true because he was alive when he was going to the hospital. He, was, he so died these in are, the These are the big points. Well, we, we think he died at the hospital. We don't know. We're told that, that he, he was check, he checked in around 4, 18, and then officially was pronounced dead at 5, 50-something, right? Is that's officially the story. And then, and then but uh, where's, the, where's, the, uh, where's the death certificate? Where's the, where's the autopsy? Where is the ballistic report? Where is a single video, a photograph of Seth Rich being, you know, laying on the street? Where's the body cam? Where's a... Where's a single witness that heard a shot? Where's the suspect? Where is the D.C. police? There's not, nothing, nothing in this case points to 
to uh, the official narrative, which is, which is, you know, a kid gets shot in the street and, and it's a botched robbery. Three years later, still no, you know what I'm saying? Like, so for you, a guy who's an internet guy, an internet personality, throwing around the idea that maybe it wasn't a murder, maybe, you know, oh, all right, when, when you say that someone took 50 grand to sell their story, and you didn't say that, but somebody else did, I could see how that could ruffle someone's feathers. But just to say that, you know, that, uh, that the kid wasn't murdered or he didn't die in the way they said he died is, is journalism, in my view. And I think that's, you know, you're, you got to be uh, you're commended for doing that. So, so I, I guess, um, I, I don't know, I don't, what, else, what else can you tell us about this? What else uh, about this lawsuit? Why, why Aaron Rich? Why do you think he's coming after you? Why do you think he's, why do you think he's, he's throwing this stuff out there trying to stop the story? What's the motive? Well, I mean, in my opinion, he's always been trying to stop the story because he wants to protect his interest in the story. I mean, if that is true, you know, that he received money from it, that's something that you wouldn't want to be out there and you would want to silence anybody that had that sort of that type of information. I mean, I don't look at what they're trying to do with me as them trying to silence me or anything like that. I think that they actually just want to get my story on record because somebody's trying to slander the fuck out of me and uh, we want to repair this. And obviously... They have it out on Ed Batowski, and they would like information that's going to make it Ed Batowski look like a bad man so that they can, you know, basically win this lawsuit. But in my opinion, based on what I'm seeing, it could, this, this is a very high-powered law firm, but they're utilizing a lot of junior partners on this thing, so they're not actually going to be, uh, you know, they're not doing the best that they can do, they do, they can do on this one. And on top of that, you know, they're only doing their due diligence right now to speak with me and get my deposition on here because they want to know more about Shadowbox and what we were doing for Edward Patowski. But, you know, what they're going to find is that, you know, we were just doing reputation stuff, letting them know where all the bad shit was and, you know, trying to help them get rid of some of it or at least move it down the Google, Google lines, which is not illegal, by the way. And, I mean, after that, it's... There's really nothing out. There's really nothing there for them to really find. I mean, they said that they wanted to know about some guy named Stuart Bloggerant, who I've actually heard about before, but you know, I don't really have any emails associated to that guy. And they also seem to want to know about this meeting that we had, which I've spoken about before. There was a lot of different people uh, that were there, um, but it was like seven different people. Thomas Schoenberger was one of the people that was there, so. It was uh, Batowski, Malia Zimmerman, and a whole bunch of other folks that were associated, and we were basically having a think tank powwow on, you know, what 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 the options were, and you know what what the viability of each of the options were. And I mean, we basically all congruently came to the realization is that you know the best thing to do at this particular point was basically nothing. And you know, there was some other individuals that were in this area, like most importantly, Tom and Schoenberger, that were you know offering up a lot of illegal things that they're now accusing other people of doing. So what that dumbass doesn't understand is that uh, there is recordings from all these things that are outside of his recordings, and uh, anything that he's basically gone up and you know done a deposition on, testified against, is going to get him basically screwed and you know like i've been playing this game for a long time now with these people and i'm not trying to fight with anybody i don't want to be associated with the seth rich case i was just an online investigator that did my due diligence and i mean i actually got in front of edward patowski i spoke to i got edward patowski to speak to kim.com about all this stuff and i even you know let him know about what my history with kim.com is in particular and you know for me it just seems like it's a whole lot of people that were sticking their noses in business that they had no business in doing, and that's the reason that Aaron Rich is suing them in the first place, is because he's like, hey, you know, you're fucking defaming me, you know, you're saying shit that's not true about me, and I want some repercussions, but the thing is, is what Aaron Rich and his lawyers don't understand is that it's not Edward Patowski that was saying this shit, and it's not Matt Couch that was saying this shit, it was Seymour Hersh saying this shit, so irregardless of all the work and money that they're spending right now, this fucking case is getting thrown out, and these are guys who are a bunch of fucking clowns. Yeah, that's just really it. There, there's no doubt. I mean, it's that, as I said, that's what I said initially, that your punishment, your punishment is the process. The process, you know, you gotta, you gotta sit down, you gotta write up this a bunch of depositions. Punishment. You gotta, you gotta dig through your emails, you've gotta, go, you know, make a trip to wherever, D.C., to, to, to 
to, you know, get in front of a bunch of idiots and talk, and eventually a judge will throw it out. I'm, I'm surprised the judge even signed your, you know, signed that uh, subpoena, the appearance. They didn't. The, the judge they, hasn't signed not, it. The, the judge hasn't signed oh, it. It's so, not even signed. So it's it doesn't have a court clerk or nothing on it. So it's likely that that won't even happen. That that'll probably, I I mean I don't understand how you're sig. The, the what I'm not hearing is how are you significant, in, in this case. It just sounds it sounds like a shit show between a bunch of, you know, angry guys trying to, trying to trying to you know dig each other dig into each other's pockets. Uh, we have a you know mutual friend Jason Goodman is kind. Of, I mean that that whole circle of people suing each other. And then you, you look at it and you say, what the hell are these people talking about, man? Where's the, where, where is the, how, how far off the truth are you? You know, isn't this about reporting the news, you know, digging into the Seth Rich case, the murder of Seth Rich? If his, if his brother doesn't like what you're saying, fuck him, you know? His, I mean, I watched all the testimony with Seth Rich and his family, and it, it, quite frankly, from a law enforcement, you know, point of view... I just think didn't think it was compelling. You know, I didn't think that his father's testimony, none of it was compelling enough to for me to believe that that this this kid got killed three days ago. You know, it was just like it seemed like they were mouthing the words. It was very rehearsed. Now, is that is that a crime to say that? Are, are we allowed to? We're not allowed to speculate. Why are you going out in front of the public? Why are you going out in front of the cameras if you don't want your story to be talked about? Right? If you don't want your story to be talked about. If you don't want your story to be public, then stay in your house and shut the hell up, right? And so, so they don't really have a case, right? How could you defame someone that is, is, is becoming a public figure? Seth Rich is arguably a public figure, and he's dead, so or allegedly dead. So you can't, you can't really, you know, drag him up. But the brother is, you know, once you step out in front of those cameras, it's a whole different equity. You know, it's public figure. You know, what is a public figure? You know, so, so, um, so what, what else? You, you had said something else that uh, I should write it down, but I forgot. So, uh, I just had a brain freeze. So, so, so Seth Rich, right? Do you think, um, <laughs> I don't even know what to ask you. So what else can you, can you tell us about it? What else is going on, man? What are you doing I mean, anyway? Where the hell are you right now? Defango? I'm in Florida. Oh, you're in Florida. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm in Florida in a truck with my shadow broker right now. We've been uh, going around and doing all kinds of nefarious shit all over Florida in association with this. I mean, I'm really just, you know, like doing my due diligence. I'm on vacation right now. Oh, like, okay. I went to NASA. I'm going to Universal Studios. Like, you know, I was at St. Augustine. You know, I'm just, like, doing the cool tourist shit and, you know, just having a good time. And for some reason... When I'm having a good time, every time it happens to me, like, all this other stuff comes up. So now, you know, like, instead of sitting here talking with my shadow broker, you know, and just joining the ride, you know, I have to talk about the Seth Rich case and, you know, yeah. give emails. You know, like, I'm also talking to Jason Goodman, and I was like, you know what, Jason? I don't hate you. We had our problems back in the past. I'm not suing you. You're not suing me. And I was like, but I want you to have all these e emails in association with what I think might be helpful in your case because I don't like what's going on right now with all these lawsuits and shit. I think that what is happening, yeah, what's happening is just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think that, you know, anybody that's associated with this thing, myself included, has problems right now. You know, to me, it's a problem. It's been a problem from the for the entire thing since the very beginning. And I haven't been wanting to have any part of any of this stuff like i was getting thrown in and they were trying to talk me into suing this guy and you know that's the best move i ever did was basically just tell him to fuck off and you know not file this shit yeah. because now i'm finding out so much stuff about the lawyer set up rbs's lawyer how much how he's been in the truth or community and to me right now, I'm in a very good position to, you know, basically destroy whatever is left of the Seth Rich conspiracy. And it's just going to be the Seth Rich story from now on. And, you know, like to me, that's going to be the greatest thing, you know, like this is what I've always been waiting for. You know, and these lawyers have no idea what they're about to get, but they're going to get it and they're going to have to deal with it. And, you know, with the, the Goodman case, it's like 
ever since Dave Acton started like railing into him for all this stuff and trying to interject into these lawsuits, did Jason Goodman slander Robert David Steele? Yes. Is Robert David Steele a public figure? Yes. Is Robert David Steele known for being truthful? Absolutely not. So, to me, it's just like you know we're go we got two guys. Jason Goodman tried to be the truthful guy, but he get caught up. He got caught up in the bullshit. And I feel like the same people that were fucking with me, I have proof in email that they were fucking with him this entire time. And they're related to the lawyer, the guy that's suing him. And honestly, I just want to see that fucking case get dismissed. I want to see that judge look at both of them and say, Jason, you're, you're good to go. You ain't got to worry about this shit. You can actually yeah. get some fucking sleep. And then I want him to turn around and look at Robert David Steele and look at this fucking Steven Biss character and just be like, guess what? You know, like, you should never even try. The next time you try to fucking shit lawsuit like this one because there's been a few that have been done dave seaman got his shit thrown out devin nunez got his shit thrown out like and it's all because of this fucking lawyer who just seems to be you know milk bilking people for money and i was almost the tip of the spear on that front and i am oh so glad that i never had to deal with that shit ever you know i, I I'm, I'm glad i just got out basically yeah. like i'm out i'm in florida i'm having a good fucking time you know and i'm just going to enjoy myself like this process People are like, oh, no, you got subpoenaed. This is, like, terrible. This is the greatest thing that could ever have happened. I am, like, pumped because now I get to go through this shit on my channel and teach people what it's really like down to the, you know, wire. And so people can see that, you know, you're not supposed to be afraid of this stuff, especially if you're not even in the case. Like, the only reason they want to talk to me is because they want testimony on things. And that doesn't implicate me in shit. Right. You know? Well, there is a there is a public interest in having the Seth Rich case become a giant conspiracy theory. Right? That, that is the the motive, especially going into you know twenty twenty election. Seth Rich was mentioned in the Mueller report. Mueller concluded that Seth Rich there was it was uh, that that Julian Assange falsely falsely speculated that Seth Rich was the leak. That's all now on the record. You just had. Chuck Schumer this morning leaning on the fact that 12 GRU agents, 12 GRU Russian agents swooped into the, you know, the Democratic National Committee and hacked the shit out of it and gave it to WikiLeaks, right? That's the... Nah, that, fuck no, it was Jessel and Raddick. Well, right. oh, it was Jessel and Raddick in conjunction with the guy named Seth Rich. Jessel and Raddick's going to be a name that pops up a lot in the future on this one because I think... I have it on very good authority that, and, you know, like confirmation from other people that are her friends that, you know, the leaker was a blonde person, but it wasn't a blonde male, it was a blonde female. And I think that, you know, unfortunately, it's always been in my opinion that, you know, the reason that Seth Rich died was because he got worked over by some girl who's kind of well known for utilizing her womanly wilds to get people to do things, and uh, he lost his life for it. And that's why I think Julian Assange himself came out and said, you know, he never said that Seth Rich was the leaker. He says, well, I find it concerning that somebody that was purported to be the leaker was murdered. But he never said that it was him. But the thing is, is nobody ever looks at the fact that it could have just been somebody else that leaked it. And Seth Rich got axed for it. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I mean... I think all of this stuff will possibly come out in court if these these lawyers are worth their salt, but it probably won't because they're going to want to dismiss this shit. Yeah, they don't I, want this I don't kind of that, they don't want this information out there. I don't think that the people, honestly, the people that you're dealing with, especially Seth Rich's brother, does. Do you think that Seth Rich's brother had something to do with Seth Rich's employment at the DNC? Is there a connection? Mm, some I mean, I, I wouldn't really know, honestly. Right. I mean, I know he worked for Northrop Grumman, but, I mean, how could he have gotten his brother a job at the DNC? I mean, I, yeah, I started working with uh, the Obama campaign as I volunteered. That's right. how I got in. Yeah. And, you know. So did I. I mean, I volunteered for Bernie, right? You know, so, <laughs> so Seth Rich, the, the, yeah, the story goes on and on. I mean, because, you know, you got Julian Assange, you know, sitting in, the, in a jail cell right now. And that story, if Seth Rich's story, if the story becomes that 
you know, somebody inside the DNC leaked it out. It could also have been the Imran Awan thing, that whole spy ring in Congress, the whole idea that 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 Debbie Wasserman Schultz's passwords were available to others to get inside of that. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's other possibilities, which I agree that it could not, it's not exclusively Seth Rich, but it could have been other people. But this story has a direct, you know, it, it, it democracy is in, in the balance here. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a very big story because, because those, those emails, right, that information that, that was provided to WikiLeaks did, in fact, have an influence on the election because all fake news media was reporting on it. You know, Washington Post was reporting on it. The, you know, New York Times was reporting on it. It had a big influence. So to debunk that story, to say that Seth Rich, you know, wasn't, you know, wasn't the, uh, the, the leak that Russians, that Russians hacked the election is, is fairly big, man. So, so what are you going to do about it? What, what's, what's, your, what's your game plan, man? What's your, what are you going to do about his lawsuit? Tell him to, you know, um, kiss all I'm going to do is provide everything that they want and make sure that they pay for everything, any travel or anything that I have to do. And I'm just going to let everybody know what I've known and what I've been telling on my YouTube channel for a very, very long time. And I mean, after that. So in final finality, are you Q? <laughs> are you Q? Um, I was never, I never posted this Q one time, but I did create the whole Q thing with my friends. Uh, and uh, one of my friends just revealed himself today. Who's who's actually con who continues? Sticky. Con who's continuing? Just for the record, I, I'm not I'm not confirm I'm not <laughs> corroborating this with you. But who who is who's continuing without in your absence? Who's con who do you believe is continuing the Q posting? I mean, we've always uh, thought that it was pamphlet and uh, his group of friends over there because they had posted and leaked it. They were posting as Q online before on their channel. And I mean, I don't think anybody's posting as Q now because nobody wants that type of heat. Right. right. So that's just what I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I was following the case where the kid that uh, he shot the Gambino guy, you know, the, the, the Q kid, he had the Q on his hand. And, um, you know, he shot the, the Gambino crime boss here in New York. Right, and he was saying Q, Q made me do it. I fucking I was following Q. Right, so it had, it, I guess it had a, li a little, a little bit of consequence, right? So these yeah, stories, a lot of consequence. you know, it did. It's, these these kind of uh, stories kind of fascinate me, but I think it's um, just listening to it. It it's it brings me um, to the conclusion that it's just a rabbit hole of people. It's a certain group of people online. You know, Jason Goodman, he loves this shit. And fucking George Webb, they love this suing everybody shit and his brother acting, right? They're all suing each other and they think that there's, there's some sort of integrity or some sort of, you know, discovery that's going to come through that. But really, it's just a shit show. And it's, it's denigrating to the, you know, to yourself. Because um, when you finally get in front of judges and juries, judges are going to look at you and they're gonna, the judge laughs at it. It says, this is... This is this is people torturing each other, you know, and 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 not on my time, you know. That's essentially the way these things go, you know. And um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Good George uh, Goodman was just. I mean, I, I with I have less to say about George jo, uh, Jason than I do with George uh, George Webb, who I I felt that that whole thing with his buddy Task Force with the woman that that he kind of led to that, 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 uh, the death of this friend was very, very troubling to me. That's the only reason I got involved in it. I saw them all as a bunch of screwballs. They had a funny time back in the day where they, you know, who spoofed the file and all this bullshit, right? It was kind of goofy, but when the, when the girl died, that, right, the girl that's living in the hotel with George Webb dies, Right, and he's he's on the record telling her, you know, go knock on Imran Awan's door, you know, his dangerous fucking spooky characters, right? And suddenly she's dead, right? And then and then we look at the autopsy, and her, her body's all beat up and bruised, and she's got a pacemaker, and none of it, none of none of Webb's story story makes sense to what he was saying, as you know, as to what happened. That that's where it. Uh, 
that's where it, it, I realized that these guys are not, uh, you know, they're, it's not a safe environment. It's not a truthful environment at all, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and Jason, too, because he plays that. It seems like he, I don't know him well enough, but he seems like he plays that flute. You know, he, he plays along with these conspiracies as if it's something that is beneficial to his business plan, right? You know, but then he turns around and he lies about you. You know, I, I was just a, for me, I was just a whistleblower. And he picked up on the story, and I gave him the story. And then, I don't know, when the story changed, and then all of a sudden I was, the, I was the villain. I was some, you know, some garbage guy attacking him or some crazy shit. Right? So, mm -hmm. so he's, he's, a little, hey. he's a little strange. And Webb is just a compulsive liar. I mean, I caught him in... I mean, he, they, he, he's trying to say in video, a, you know, 25, 30 different lies about me. Right? And then, you know, when someone lies about you, you know if they're telling the truth or not because it's your truth, right? You know, yeah. uh, so, so Webb is, uh, you know, so shady characters. It's no wonder. And I'm not calling you shady. I'm just saying that for whatever reason, I, I equate you with that kind, of, that kind of pool of people right now, unfortunately. And, and yeah, then, most people do. You know, and, and that's probably not your doing. That's, that's the doing of... Of the dirty yeah. deed, you know those guys. You're just trying to in. You're trying. You're trying to interject yourself and try to siphon a little truth out of the story, and and you got you got a guy like George Webb telling 55 different lies about you, right? And mm -hmm. then and then suddenly it's you know it's it's this other. It becomes another story. Uh, hey so, man, if you look back at my life, uh, I was always just the transparent guy on YouTube that was posting stuff up, and then. Thomas Schoenberger and the rest of them sent me over to Jason Goodman's video for this Who Spoofed the Seth Rich Files thing, and my life has been awful ever since. So you might equate me to all these other people, but like the reality is, is that you can't because I've taken more negativity from all of these guys than any of you people have, and I've gotten my name run through the mud. I've been dragged through every which like every rabbit hole that you could possibly fucking imagine. I've been called every name under the book, been said that I was an agent, that I'm working for this and that. And, you know, hey, I sent over Jason Goodman a bunch of emails today about, you know, like what my actual involvement in any of this stuff was. And, you know, even then, I don't expect him to look at me highly. I think that he's just realizing that maybe he was a little bit wrong about me. And I have a lot more connections to really, really, really big, powerful people who understand my story and understand that, you know, hey, I was just trying to have fun on the internet, you know, just like, you know, live my life and be cool. And now, you know, like I'm constantly, you know, put into the same area as George Webb when I literally have done nothing like George Webb and I've been 100% truthful about all of my shit and I've provided evidence yeah. for all of my shit. And I well, mean, you're, honestly, you're I like talking about the tango, but really what you're talking about is you're talking about fame, right? You, you become, when you become an in internet celebrity or rock star or, or a media personality, that's what comes with the turf. You'll always have, you'll always have these types to, that will come after you trying to, you know, it's, it's what Bono said. The guy in you too said, he said, making it is hard, but, staying made is even harder right, so i think that that's what what essentially you you have a and 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 i'm not saying that that they're a good pool of people my finding is that they they're not they're not friendly they're not your friends you know they're just trying to cut you up to get in front of your crowd or right i'm not calling you to get you get in front of your crowd i'm calling you because it's an interesting story and as we you know as we have julian assange sitting in jail the three years later anniversary, July 10 of Seth Rich's alleged murder is fascinating and that the family from out of nowhere decides to drag you into the mud to see what you know. It tells me that they're, they're being directed, and that's, this is my opinion, that they're being directed by the Democratic National Committee to make this story go away. Because if, if Julian Assange steps foot on this on this, you know, on this, um, you know, in, in the U.S., and and he starts going on the record talking about this sort of thing, and names like Seth Rich pop up. The idea right now is to smear this, smear that story as a conspiracy as much as the as much as possible. So I, I I suspect that I suspect that that's what what is going on. You know, that's my thought. Well, I mean, you're probably right on that one. 
And, you know, hey, I was like, I hate to let you go right now, but, you know, I need to get... It's a little rainy out here right now, yeah. and I think we need to figure some stuff out. So, Mr. Conti, uh, thank you for your time today, I guess. And, uh, yeah. honestly, if you got any more questions or anything, uh, feel free to email me, call me. You got my number. I'm pretty much an open book on this one. I don't see that they're going to make me stop talking about any of this stuff until I actually testify. So, right. just let me know. All right. All right, sounds good. Thanks for your time, Defango. Good talk, man. Peace out. All right. Have a good one, Mr. You Conti. Too, man. Peace. Bye. <laughs> wow, Defango. Holy shit. We got Defango on the phone, man. Damn. God damn, this fucking guy, man. <laughs> so, what was that all about, man? Oh, shit, man. Fucking Defango, right? So, Defango's got his own channel over there and uh, he's got, a, got, a, got himself a nice subpoena from, from the uh, Seth Rich family, right? I'm th glad he called. I'm glad I let, he let me call, you know, give me. Give him a shout, man. I don't know what to make of it, man. It's just a big rabbit hole, right? I try to stay in the truth, right? Talk to a guy. Why is he getting sued, right? He got his foot stuck in that in that rabbit hole with uh, Jason Goodman and, and the rest of those guys and George Webb, man. I, I'm done with those guys, man. Those fucking guys, they kiss my ass, right? The guy's lying and cheating, man. So, Marcus Conte reporting. <laughs>